Hi, I will be talking about cataract surgery and intraocular pressure with a little touch on pseudo exfoliative syndrome. I feel it would be nice to talk about an interesting fact before I start the presentation. The first cataract surgery was actually performed in Egypt about 4,000 years ago. It was actually the pharaohs who were the ones suffering from them. The pharaohs sometimes were so blind that they can't even see the hands in front of the face. They would then call in the surgeon and the surgeon would chew some form of opium seed and spill it onto the eye as a form of anesthetic. He would then take a needle and poke it into the eye to try to dislocate the lens. Well, the result aren't that great, but at least light could go in and they could start seeing shadows and even movements. Things have changed significantly in modern day cataract surgery. What we do nowadays is basically a phacoemulsification and insertion of a foldable intraocular lens. The procedure is relatively quick and safe with minimal risk of complications. It is actually the most widely performed eye surgery in the world. So what we'll be discussing in this presentation is really, does cataract surgery have any effect on intraocular pressure? Studies done in the 1970s and early 1980s showed little if any reduction of intraocular pressure. However, things have changed. Since then, various studies have actually showed favorable results that cataract surgery reduced IOP. And in year 2002, a meta-analysis was performed by Professor Friedman involves 40 large studies and a total of 5,000 patients. And the conclusion was that cataract surgery actually lowers the intraocular pressure by 2-4 to four millimeters mercury. However, the results have a huge variance in different patients. And there are a few factors that we have to discuss. You know, why certain patients get more reduction and why some don't. First, the type of glaucoma. Anger closure versus open anger, well controlled versus poorly controlled and pseudo exfoliative glaucoma. Well, anger closure, poorly controlled, and pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma get the greatest reduction. There's a few possible explanations that we'll talk about later. Next factor to consider is preoperative intraocular pressure. The higher the preoperative IOP, the greater the post-op reduction. And next, the type of surgery actually makes a difference. Phaco emulsification appears to lower the IOP more than manual extracapsular cataract surgery. In this video here, it is actually an extra cap surgery and this was more commonly done in the olden days. And this might actually explain why studies done earlier uh, didn't show much benefit. And next, the depth of the anterior chamber. Uh, those with shallow anterior chamber have the greatest reduction in intraocular pressure after cataract surgery. So now we're going to discuss how cataract surgery actually lowers the intraocular pressure. Well, the first explanation is cataract surgery actually widens the angle. As we all know, as we age, the lens gets thicker and thicker, pushing the angle forward. Uh, with cataract surgery, once the lens is removed, you replace it with a thin IOL that widens the angles and improves the drainage. And in patients with phacomorphic glaucoma, all we have to do is to remove the lens. And the second explanation, we thought that the phaco emulsification prop that we put into the eye. When we started irrigation, it creates a pressure and that pressure actually forces fluid out through the normal channels. And that, some people thought that could actually improve the patency and promote flows, thus reducing the intraocular pressure after cataract surgery. Method explanation is cataract surgery actually stimulates the production of prostaglandin. And as we all know, prostaglandin actually increases the uveus sclerosis outflow and similar to the way that other um, prostaglandin drugs does. And the fourth explanation, which is interesting, they thought that vibration from the tip of the phaco machine um, is actually the reason why the um, cataract surgery uses IOP. They thought that all this ultrasonic vibration changes the extracellular matrix in the trabecular meshwork. And in 2007, someone in the States actually patented a device just to do that, just putting the prop in without actually doing a phaco emulsification for glaucoma patients. Another explanation includes post-operative inflammation that reduces aqueous production, kind of similar to what you see in patients with uveitis. 
So when do we consider cataract surgery for patients with glaucoma? Well, let's, let us have a look at the opinions from um, two experts in this field, Prof Lam and Prof Freitman, who has published extensively in this field. Well, generally, people agree that we should only do the cataract surgery for patients with glaucoma if the patient actually has both cataract and glaucoma. And these are the exact words from Prof Lam. Um, I will try FACO first as a general principle. I will consider combined surgery when the intraocular pressure is higher than 35 millimeters mercury. And for Prof Fragman, he would say, I would definitely feel more comfortable just taking out the lens and seeing where I am. I can always go back and do a trabeculectomy a month or two later if needed. Obviously, there are some others which actually support the use of FACO plus other um, devices, which uh, we are now called um, microinvasive glaucoma surgery, such as the eye stand, trabectome, and ECP. This is how a eye stand actually looks like. And each of them costs about a thousand dollars. Usually, that's basically that. If you look at this picture here, that's where the uh, aqueous humor uh, flows to into the trabecular meshwork. What you do with eye stand is just place it into the um, trabecular meshwork and it acts like a micro bypass surgery. However, FDA is only approved to put in one at a time and it has to be done together with a cataract surgery, so limiting its full potential. And result actually shows that um, eye stand and FACO reduces the IOP moderately, with 68% of patients with FACO and eye stand remain medication free versus 50% with cataract surgery alone. And next is the term, which actually involves a electrocautery device that just ablates the trabecular meshwork as you can see in this video here. And lastly, endocyclic photocoagulation ECP, uses a diode lasers to actually burn off the ciliary process and that basically reduces aqueous production. All right, so now let's move on to the next topic. Well, most of you recognize this picture here. This is actually pseudo-exfoliative syndrome. Pseudo-exfoliative syndrome is a systemic condition characterized by production of dandruff-like material. It is different from true exfoliation syndrome, which is more common in glass blowers. It was first discovered by Dr. John Lindbergh in Finland and at that time he was actually a young um, ophthalmologist in training and that's an illustration that he's drawn. He even wrote a thesis based on his findings. And we now discovered that pseudo-exfoliative syndrome is actually more common among the Northern Europeans, especially the Scandinavians. Actually, they have similar prevalence in the Arab region as well. The important thing to know about pseudoexfoliative syndrome is that patients with this syndrome have a 20 to 60% chance of suffering from glaucoma. I thought the mechanism is because of all this dandruff material being deposited in front of the lens, and as the iris contracts and dilates, it rubs off some pigment, and this pigment is deposited along the trabecular meshwork. Next, um, cataract surgery and pseudoexfoliative syndrome. It is actually quite tricky to do a cataract surgery in pseudoexfoliative uh, syndrome. That's because, you see, one of this is actually a patient with pseudoexfoliative syndrome. The pupils are always poorly dilated. But to overcome that, you could put in a myogen ring and to dilate the pupil. And they also have very weak zonules, uh, capsules. So sometimes you can put in uh, things like a capsular tension ring. Studies done by Shingerton and Shimata actually reported significant uh, IOP reductions in eyes with pseudoexfoliative syndrome with a 3.5 mm mercury reduction versus 0.48 um, in control. Performing cataract surgery in patients with pseudo-exfoliation is tricky. It is basically risk versus benefit, and we have to find the fine balance. So in conclusion, cataract surgery generally reduces the IOP by 10 to 20%, and it has a more significant effect in patients with narrow angle and pseudo exfoliation syndrome. However, patients with pseudo exfoliation syndromes have higher surgical risk.
So it is important to find the fine balance. No mountains too high for you to Have some climbing faith